we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. This episode is all about summer holidays and whether it's a genius way to get the most out of your pool or a money-saving solution to keeping your phone safe, we've got everything you need when you jet away this summer. Everyone loves a summer holiday and after this episode, you'll be covered and not just in sunscreen because we've got a sizzling selection of hacks to keep you cool on your vacation, from exciting excavators. This hack, hands down, beats any water park that I have ever been to. I love it. To scrumptious smokers. And one seriously placid pad of water. And in our epic hack, we'll be showing you how to get your summer food sorted in seconds. Thanks to the new digital age, for most of us, being able to completely switch off on your blissful summer holiday is, well, a dream. But our first clip shows one way at least to mix business and pleasure. Finally, a way to surf the web and the waves at the same time. The whole point of having a holiday is to get away from work. I mean, it really isn't a good idea to try and combine wakeboarding with doing the latest company financials. It's not going to end well. When you're wakeboarding, there are lots of different forces acting on you. There's all kinds of hydrodynamic forces from the water, so you're being pushed by buoyancy and moved along with the speed of the wave. Eventually what happens is that when this person slows down, that hydrodynamic force becomes weaker and it becomes overcome by the person's gravity and therefore he unfortunately sinks into the sea. Multitasking is the secret weapon of any hacker, but when you're on your summer holidays, it's a word we should really be leaving at home. A hack miss. Now, if you're the type of person who finds the idea of spending their summer holiday chilling on a beach boring, then this next video will quite literally sweep you off your feet. All you need is a mate who owns a digger to spin you around on a giant towel. These machines are great for intimidating crabs. You know, they see those big jaws, they have very low self-esteem. Works also for lobsters. As the sheet is being pulled across the water, the water can't compress, because liquids, like solids, don't compress. The water can't get out of the way fast enough, so the sheet just pushes along the top of it like that. If they're being dragged at speed, they're actually trying to pull these people across the water faster than they can sink. So ultimately what's happening is they're being pushed across the surface of the water, which is what's keeping them up. This is like skimming a stone. Yes, a 90 kilogram stone made of flesh and bone using a five ton digger, just the same. From now on, I'm never going to the beach without a digger. The bonus is that when they finish, they'll be able to make the biggest sandcastle the world has ever seen. An industrious hack hit! If part of your summer holiday includes stopping off for a barbecue along the way, there's no doubt a muscle car of explosive fire-belching exhaust pipes will make it one to remember. Because what invigorating outdoor summer holiday is complete without a muscle car spewing fire and fumes right next to you? The reason this works is that in some cars, there's a little bit of unburnt fuel left by the time the exhaust fumes are coming out the back. And if that exhaust pipe's very hot, that can be enough to ignite the unburnt fuel and the oxygen in the exhaust pipe and create this effect that's called a backfire. This is pretty cool. What I think would be nice is if you had a little group of Boy Scouts behind with marshmallows on sticks or toasting those on the, uh, the exhaust. He always links it back to food, doesn't he? Now all I can think about is marshmallows. But what exactly are they? If only we had a fun yet informative graphic sequence to explain. Luckily for you, we do. 
Marshmallows are made from gelatin, hot sugary syrup, and pure heaven. When these ingredients are beaten together, this creates air bubbles, which gives them their fluffy texture. When you hold the marshmallow above the fire, heat makes those air molecules trapped inside vibrate, and the air bubbles expand, making the marshmallow puff up. And when the energy-rich sugar inside the marshmallow gets hot enough, it starts to break down into smaller molecules that react with one another. This is called caramelization and produces new nutty and buttery flavors to give you the perfect toasted marshmallow. Just don't get them too close to the fire. Sugar burns at around 180 degrees, whereas a campfire can top more than 1,000 degrees. No match for any fluffy marshmallow. This ingenious fire lighting hack will keep the kids quiet all through that long summer holiday. Just remember to stock up on marshmallows. When it comes to getting that summer barbecue going, we've already shown you one innovative technique that helps you get the most out of your car. Well, in our next video, we've got another great hack that's a bit more practical. If you do it the right way, that is. Observe. I can see what this person was doing. They were trying to get more oxygen into their fire, but unfortunately they flapped it just a little bit too hard. There are things that they can do to improve their barbecuing further. One of these is to stack the charcoal in a pyramid-like shape, and this helps to concentrate the heat and make sure that you can get a really hot fire underneath your food. Sorry, Anna, but I wouldn't trust this guy to stack anything. Clearly, this guy's got the right idea. He was just too enthusiastic. As a demonstration of how not to fan your barbecue, this is a success. As a hack, it's definitely a miss. Maybe just buy some fire lighters next time. Coming up later at Hack HQ, our main man Mike and his loyal sous chef Marcus will be taking barbecues to the next level in our summer holiday epic hack, where they'll make sure nothing in sight is left uncooked. Summer holidays are a time when you want to relax and do something fun. Here's how to cover both bases without exerting yourself too much. This guy surely gets a bonus point for not spilling a drop of drink. This guy has based this hack on stand-up paddleboarding, which comes from a Hawaiian sport where you stand up on a paddleboard and you use a single oar to move yourself around. It's actually really, really difficult. What you need to do is maintain your upright posture, but you have very little friction between the bottom of the paddleboard and the water itself. So there's very little way to actually change your position on the water without just slipping and falling over. What is pretty impressive about this hack is to catch the wave, your body weight needs to be pretty much in the center of the board, but then to steer it and to ride the wave, you've got to put your body weight a little bit further back so the fins go into the water and get the traction with the water. So he's obviously making these slight adjustments as he's catching the wave so he can ride the wave perfectly. Sitting down, check. Cord extreme sport, check. Almost zero effort, check. Yep, that's a bona fide summer holiday hack. Hit! Now it's that part of our summer holiday when we go on a little adventure to Hack HQ to see what kind of tips Mike and Marcus are cooking up for us. Over to you, lads. Mike. Marcus. So I'm ready for our summer holidays hack, as you can see. Yeah, strong look, mate. Right, today for our summer holidays hack, it's all about barbecuing. I love There's barbecues. There's nothing better than a barbecue on a summer's day. Think of a party where you've got a barbecue going. Brilliant. I love barbecue food, but you've got to prep it, you've got to cook it, you've got to hang around at the barbecue while everyone's having fun. Which is exactly what this hack is all about. Cooking that barbecue food in seconds. Barbecue food in seconds? This could be the biggest breakthrough in cooking since the microwave. Cooking barbecue food in seconds? Yeah, that sounds great, mate. How are we going to do that? I feel a trademarked mic demonstration coming on. I'm going to show you all about heat transfer by blowing up a balloon. <laughs> Look at the lungs on him. What we're going to do is we're going to light the candle. <laughs> I love blowing up balloons. Yeah, that's not weird at all, Mike. And then set this over the candle to see all about heat transfer. I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen when I do this. What, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, there's going to be a pop. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Right, is that all right? Yep. Over the candle. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Still scared me. Introducing Marcus Bronzy, the toughest man in telly. So the heat transferred through the candle up into the balloon. There was nowhere else for it to go, so it popped the balloon. Cool. Now, heat transfers through different materials in different ways. And if it's got a lot of water, it can transfer through it really quickly and smoothly. All right. So, a balloon with some water. 
by putting a little bit of water in here and blowing it up again, we'll see how differently this heat transfer acts on the balloon. I'll light up the candle again. Ever heard of matches, Mike? So this time we're just doing the same thing, but there's a drop, not even that much water in it. There's not, not much water, water, so you have to get it right over the top of it. There, so you've got the flame actually on the balloon there. So the flame is touching it's, it's, the balloon. You can even see, look, yeah. it's made like a little black mark on it. So the flame touches the balloon, the heat transfers through the balloon into the water, which is a great heat sink. That water is absorbing all of the energy from the flame and dissipating it out so it's not popping the balloon. OK, so in this case, the water's transferring the heat onto it and it stops the latex from popping. Yeah. Cool. I think I'm starting to get my head around heat transfer. How are we going to use this for our hack, though? Right, so heat transfer is perfect for food. You've got lots of water in food, which enables the heat to transfer through it nice and evenly. And heat transfer is exactly what we need for our next thing, cool. which is making ice cream. Ice cream! <laughs> How are we going to make it without a freezer, though, mate? We're going to use liquid nitrogen. I had a feeling this was going to make an appearance. A liquid nitrogen is at minus 196 degrees Celsius. That is very cold, it's right? It's really cold, and we're going to use this cooling effect of the liquid nitrogen to freeze our cream down to a low temperature very quickly. Now, when we do it quickly, the water inside the cream cools really fast, and this means that the ice crystals form really quickly, and that means they're really small, and it makes the ice cream really smooth. Okay. So I'm going to chuck a load of cream into here. Ooh, look at that. Yes. Oh, we'll stick it all in. There we go. Loads and loads of sugar in ice cream. So chuck loads and loads of sugar into that. Yeah, a bit more. Stir that around so the sugar melts nicely okay, cool. in the cream. Make it a nice smooth mix. It's like watching a Michelin star chef in action. Master chefs, take note. So this is just icing sugar and cream at the moment. Icing Nothing sugar else. and cream. Yeah, perfectly melted ice cream. All right. I'm going to get you to stir this, so right. stick these gloves on. Why do I need gloves on if I'm not touching the liquid nitrogen? Because you're going to be touching the bowl. Right. And that's going to get down to minus 196 degrees as well. All right, and that's the kind of heat transfer that I don't really want to happen you to my hands. You don't really want that to happen to your hands. Yeah, you might want to be cool, Marcus, but you don't want to be that cool. Right, you keep stirring. All right. I'll get pouring. Right, there we go, keep stirring. Going well? Yeah, I can yeah. feel it getting a little bit thicker. And if I didn't have these gloves on right now... Oh, it's looking good. I'd have very cold hands, right? I think that's a safe bet, Marcus, yes. Yeah, you'd have really cold hands. You wouldn't want to stick your tongue to that bowl. Cooking with liquid nitrogen is definitely one way to make sure people don't lick the bowl. It's all boiled off. Yeah, perfect. See, it's getting loads and loads of nitrogen into there, so it's making it really airy. Oh, I think we've got some frozen bits around the side as well. This is a daytime show, Marcus. We don't need to be hearing about your frozen... Oh, he means bowl. Carry on. Don't get frozen bits around the side. Okay. Keep stirring, keep right, stirring. Right, right. right, make sure that all moves. Yeah. Brilliant. Look at that, that's some perfect, creamy, smooth ice cream. Give it a taste. In under a minute. Give it a taste test, yeah? Oh, yeah. I'm starting to like this heat transfer business, mate. And that is all thanks to the heat transfer through the water in the cream. So it makes tiny little ice crystals inside the ice cream, making it really smooth and creamy. Right. I love ice cream on a summer's day, but I think I'm ready for the main course now, Mike. From frozen treats to flame-grilled meats, stay tuned because coming up in our epic hack, Mike will be turning up the heat to deliver a truly mouth-watering summer holiday barbecue. So far, we've seen some extreme aqua multitasking and an amazing hack to make your nice, relaxing day at the beach something to remember. But keep that sunscreen handy, because coming up, we've got even more tips to help you big up that summer brick. We've already seen one excellent use of an excavator on a summer holiday. There can't be another one, though, right? Wrong! Get ready for some more aquatic industrial fun with this poolside digger hack. No, this isn't a James Bond baddie's torture device. It's actually a hilarious way to get dumped in a pool. This hack, hands down, beats any water park that I have ever been to. I love it. If you were eight, you'd be like, this is amazing. And then as soon as you get to 31, you're like, this is really dangerous. There are two parameters that determine how much one of these things can lift. You've got your hydraulic lift capacity, which determines physically how much weight the hydraulic mechanism can handle when lifting. Then you've got the tipping load, which is the amount that if you're trying to lift, you're actually going to start tipping the entire mechanism over. 
uh, watching this clip, it has the air of a needy uncle who owns a construction business who's trying to win over his nieces and nephews and irritating the actual parents. I wish I had an uncle like that. This bit of kit beats any pool toy on the market. An instant way to improve your summer holiday by 700%. By 2023, 100% of the Earth's population will have dropped their phone in water whilst on holiday. This hack shows you how to rescue your trusty cell phone from a slow, soggy death. The way you can close a sandwich bag is with these uh, very, very small, clever mechanisms. It's sort of like a zip, where on the one side you've got two J-shaped grabby things, and on the other side you've got something that's a bit sort of T-shaped that sticks into those grabby things. And so when you push it together, that is bound very tightly and not even water can get inside. Grabby things, stop baffling us with all these scientific terms, Andrew. This particular plastic bag is polyethylene terephthalate PET. That's what most plastic bags are made from. That is a really useful material because it can be deformed and maintain that shape. So you can use it to build pretty much anything. When sounds pass through solids, the atoms are just bumping into each other to transfer the sound energy. So it's very easy to transfer sound from the air, through the plastic and into the mobile phone's receptor. Nothing ruins that summer vacation like breaking a phone that costs about the same amount as the holiday. This money-saving waterproofing hack is a lifesaver. Now, if you happen to have a spare multi-tier filing cabinet knocking about your house, your summer holiday is about to get a lot more delicious. What you're seeing here is something called a hot smoker. So this has got a fire at the bottom and smoke coming up the top. As that hot smoke is circulating around all the meat, it's actually infusing with it at the same time. Nothing beats the summery taste of proper barbecue food. But how does smoking food actually work? Smoking foods is thought to have originated from cavemen cooking in smoke-filled, uh, caves. The way that classic upright smokers work is to have your burning wood at the bottom with racks of food up above. The heat rises from the bottom to the top of the smoker, where some air is vented out and some begins to cool and drop again. The circulating hot air is known as convection, and the flow carries the smoke with it. A trick that is often used is to add a tray of water to the smoker. The excess heat turns the water to steam, which combines with the smoke, helping the flavours transfer to the surface of the food. The key to smoking is getting the temperature right, if the overall temperature inside the smoker is over 80 degrees Celsius, the food gradually dries out and shrivels. Getting your summer barbecue food on while also symbolically destroying your workplace, this summer holiday hack is a double hit. Along with people reserving sunbeds with towels, getting sand in your feet at the beach is the most annoying thing that can happen on holiday. Here's how to end it forever. There's nothing more painful than putting flip-flops on with sandy feet. Never stubbed your toe, Anna. When you pour talc onto water, the water is attracted to the talc, and so it's sucked away from the sand. Now, the sand is dry, and it can just be brushed off your foot. Getting sand in your toes is as much a part of the summer holidays as sun, swimming, and not getting around to reading that book. This hack does work, but is it worth it? I can't possibly call this one, guys. I'm leaving it up to you. Do you love ice cream, but resent dragging yourself away from your sun lounger to get it? Well, this next lazy hack could be for you. Let's face it, whoever has weather like this on their summer holiday deserves to have their ice cream delivered however they like. One of the problems with consuming vast quantities of calorifically rich uh, uh, sugar and non-dairy fats is walking from your deck chair to the ice cream van and back uh, is going to burn up some of those calories. So this means that you get all of those calories and you don't waste any. This hack seems to come with a high risk of ice cream on head, from what I could make out. I have tried a similar method. Uh, I was doing candy floss delivery. Um, but by the time it got there, it was just sticks. When there's only two deck chairs on the beach, there's no way you want to lose them. So this hack makes sure you can order ice cream from the comfort of your precious seat. A handy holiday hack hit! Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier we showed you how to make everyone's favourite summertime treat, ice cream, using Mike's favourite chemical treat, liquid nitrogen. 
Now, though, it's time for the main course. I hope you're hungry, because we're about to make summer holidays epic with our instant barbecue food cooking hack. Mike, what is this? This is my chicken char griller 6,000. 6,000? 6, 6,000, yep. Yes, I've been looking for a new chicken char griller since my chicken char griller 5,000 broke. We've got the chickens up there, right. and then we've got these big flame projectors, which are going to all group together and fire flame balls straight up at those chickens, cooking them perfectly. What have chickens ever done to you, Mike? Cool. How exactly does this work, though? Because there's a lot going on, mate. This is propane gas. This feeds through on a small pipe and fills up these hopper tanks. Now, these fill up with high-pressure gas, and then we've got solenoid valves, which is keeping it in there. As soon as we open those solenoid valves, it fires it straight up. But I need this. This is a little pilot flame, because that is a high-pressure jet. It needs something to ignite it. So some of them are in foil and some of them aren't. What's the deal? So chicken's got a lot of water in it. Wrapping them in foil is going to aid the heat transfer and hopefully cook it perfectly. OK, cool. So what have we got to do now, then? All I've got to do now is turn on the gas to all of these, light the flames for the pilots, and then we go over there, press the button. I'll let you crack on with that, then. Good. I can hear those hoppers filling up. Oh, yeah, loads of gas. Loads of gas. Yep, that sounds like a standard barbecue. All I need to do now is press that button so I can come over with you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cook some chicken. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I mean, char grilled. I thought like you, like you cooked me as well. That was hot. Mike may have succeeded in building the only barbecue that, when lit, is visible from space. Well, Mike, <sighs> look at these chickens. Let's talk about this, shall we? Then, because the foil situation you seems so disappointed. <laughs> there, they look perfectly cooked. On the outside, I'll give you, like, the first <laughs> millimetre, they are very well cooked. Um, but on the inside... Uh, yeah, you don't want to be eating these. 100% right, yeah. do not want to eat these. It's funny how the foil worked out, though, because we thought this might cook them a bit more. Yeah, so the problem with the foil there, as you see, it's melted. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> it protected the chickens for a while, but then it just melted because those are burning quite hot. OK, so the key for a good, a well-cooked chicken would be uh, a lot of heat for a lot longer. Yeah, so our summer holidays hack. Looking at those chickens, I don't think I'd go that far, Mike. Mm, great summer holidays hack if you want to cook a chicken and make sure everyone at your barbecue is sick. Let's go feed these to the dogs. All right. <sighs> I think I'll stick to the ice cream. Cheers, Mike. That's about all we can cram into our suitcase for our summer holidays hacks episode. Make sure you pack those hacks when you go, and we'll see you next time. Bon voyage.